here, of course, for the world premiere of Zola. I, I, I love this part because I've been talking about this film so long, it's kind of hard to explain this film, so you will see why. But um, I'm so happy that we're actually here. I'm sharing it with you. Now you have to go out in the world and share it yourselves. And um, it's particularly, I, I, I say this a lot, but it's particularly um, rewarding for us when filmmakers come back with their films. Um, um, Janiska was here. Janiska was here with Gregory Go Boom in 2013, which was a short. She came back with Lemon, which was a feature in 2017. And we're so happy when they come back with their new films. And she is here with Zola right now. That's all I'm going to say because she has things to say. And I'm going to bring out right now the director of Zola, Janiska Bravo! <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> Hell's Bells. Uh, I mostly memorized the thing I prepared, but I have the pages in front of me in case I black out or uh, have a stroke. Um, this is so wild. I, holy shit, I like, can't even make out faces all the way. It's like crazy. Um, thank you. My first time at Sundance, I was a guest. I was a plus one, I was a plus one's plus one. I was a side, uh, broccoli, carrots, peas. Um, I got to see two movies that weekend, one at the library and one at the Eccles. If you've never been to Sundance, the Eccles is the container you are in right now. Mm -hmm. And the library is another here in Park City. Lemon, my first feature, premiered at the library. And today, we're here. I'm here. I remember my first time in this room pretty clearly. I did not have an aisle seat. Today I do. <laughs> really come up, you guys. Um, at the end of the screening, the lights come up, the room's a buzz, everyone's on to the next, and before leaving, I make an ask. A small ask, a big ask to myself, to the space, to the world outside of here. In that moment, today felt so far. This moment is not lost on me. I am most grateful. I wish that I had access to a bigger vocabulary so that I could tell it to you better. It is most like a color or a smell or a taste. Hello? Turn off your cell phones, guys. I'm in the middle of something really special. <laughs> there are lists upon lists of people that I have to thank. I am not going to start naming their names because I fear I'm going to leave someone of great import off. You know who you are. Thank you. I will thank you. I promise to thank you again before we leave this mountain. And if I haven't thanked you, no thank you. <laughs> I jest, do I? <laughs> so many familiar faces, so many people have said yes to this, so many people in this room have said yes to me, and so many people have said no, and I wouldn't be here without all of you. My life is more because of you. I feel like I'm at my own wake, and I, um, <laughs> I feel like I'm giving the second speech at my own wake. Uh, <laughs> I read this story five years ago on Twitter, October 2015 at Zolar Moon tweets what you're about to see in a 148 tweets, 145 tweets, 144 tweets. There are discrepancies as to how many tweets there are, but it is more than 100 and less than 200. <laughs> I send it to my reps before I finish reading it. I have representation. <laughs> That's the one that killed, huh? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I asked Twitter, IP, how? Days later, they get back to me and they say there is an article. I throw my name in the hat. I don't know that my name actually arrives at the hat. I am the least colorful name in the hat, not because of race or face, but because who am I? It leaves my grip and 
Two years later, I find out it is available. I go for it again. I throw my name in the hat again. And in May of 2017, it belongs to me. I belong to it. <laughs> Today felt so far then, but we're here. I'm here. Asia King, you are my hero. Period. This is for the girls and the boys who make the asks big and small when the lights come up. Thank you. Back to the stage, the director of Zola, the wonderful Janixa Bravo. Collaborators out. Thank you so much for staying. Taylor Page. Asia King, the teller of this tale. Yes, great. Hi. Hi. So I'll start off with some questions, but if you are compelled to ask something, please raise your hand up high so we can see you. Um, let's start off with Janixa from the way beginning. When did you feel first hear about the Zola saga, and why were you so compelled to put this on screen? I read it on Twitter, like I said at the top, in October of 2015 when it came out. I was immediately obsessed. It was the voice, her voice. It was so thrilling and compelling to me, the agency and the confidence that you could set this environment, this is the environment of this film, and make it funny and upsetting and stressful, but most of all funny because my space that I feel the most comfortable in is in sort of stressful comedy, and it really spoke to me, thank you, uh, and it really spoke to me, and I knew that I wanted it, it was in a way, I mean, she's sort of like a real life superhero, right? I feel her voice is the voice I wish I had, or maybe the quietest voice inside of me. And in terms of a collaboration, this is such a collaborative. So yeah. oh. Sorry, guys. It just feels weird. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is such a collaborative effort. Um, can you talk about your collaborators, from the cast to your co-writer? Um, when did you decide to put this team together? How did you decide to put this team together? I think of, of everyone on the stage. Well, the first is Asia, and so I feel you know I'm brought to her. She's brought to me. Uh, Jeremy is the second person brought on. Uh, he is my co-writer. We, when, when I got the job, I knew that I wanted to write this piece with someone who felt perhaps more tethered to uh, their phone um, than I am. And, and I wanted to be able to play and, and arrive at this vocabulary that I felt he and I can do together. I feel like it's better if they talk about it, but <laughs> you get it. Thanks, thanks so much. Um, and then, and then the order is Taylor, then Coleman, then Nick, then Riley, and here we are. And Joy's somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, is this the first time the cast has seen the film? And what are some of your initial reactions? The honest answer is no, but the answer we tell everyone that worked on it, our producers, is no, they've never seen it before. <laughs> so, but what, what were some of your first reactions when seeing the story finally up on screen? I think it was like, wow. <laughs> oh my god. 
oh my God. Right? Yeah, it was something like that. <laughs> um, for me, I was like reliving it. So it was a surreal moment. I was kind of frozen. I was no, wow. It was more like, okay, yeah, that, that's happened. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> to see it again and like relive it and see it in film and the way that they nailed it, like, yeah, it was a surreal moment for me. I'm, I feel you wow, girl. <laughs> I just, I always have this in films, but particularly with this one, you get so in the world and you're kind of like, oh yeah, this is all being filmed. <laughs> and that was, it was such a fun experience that it was kind of fun to just relive that experience because it was really, I think we all had a great time. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great time, yeah. Um, I watched it the first time in an editing suite by myself on a very small screen. Um, so this was a big screen and big sound and people laughing and enjoying it and laughing at Derek. <laughs> um, which feels bad, you know. <laughs> He's loyal, so. <laughs> But first of all, it was so nice to be in a movie like this. <laughs> I'm a British actor, and you know, it's nice when I get to use different accents, and you know, great to be an American once in a while, so thank you very much for this. Um, but actually, it was really, really cool, because um, the way we bonded, we shot this down in Tampa, we became such a, I mean, we were taking, there are images of us, like we took naps together, these long shoots, and just loving on each other, because also we, we felt, you know, we wanted to get into the, all the grittiness of what we were dealing with, and the honesty of it. And also the playful sense of it, the how you can, you know, you can be playful and you can slide to some dark territory, and that's very human. And so I think we were just all really um, embracing that spirit and coming together, you know, with so much love because we had to do so much, you know, weird and harrowing work. I thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking about the human, one of my favorite scenes or parts of the movies when you switch in perspective, how important was it to have the second voice? tell the other side of the story. Uh, I remember that when it had come out, when it, when Asia had tweeted this story and I had started to do dramaturgical research on it, uh, most of the articles written about, about her story questioned the validity of it. And, and I think women, women of color particularly experience this when you, you know, speak your truth. I think the validity of the thing that you're talking about comes in question. And so I had, done in my research, the character that Riley and Nick are also loosely based on had also told their version of the events, one on Reddit, one on Facebook, and the, the movie in a way is a kind of love letter to the internet and, and cell phones and screens, and so I wanted, I felt that I didn't want to walk away from the movie and have anybody ask me, well, what did Stephanie think? And I was like, you know what she thinks, it's here. Uh, and so there, that's why. Jeremy, do you have anything to add? <laughs> um, so, so, I mean, the fun thing about the whole movie, like working with Janix was that for like three months I got to be in like a really intense like film school. Um, Cause I didn't go to film school, I went to drama school. And um, one of the things about Janix is that she reminds me of my mom in the sense that like my mom was always like, when you clean the house, <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Janixa. Um, but my mom would be like, when you clean the house, like, don't do your level of clean, do my level of clean. And so with Janixa, it was like, don't write your level of details, write my level of details. And I was like, okay. So it was like, the carpet had four lint hairs on it and like things like that. Um, and when we were looking at the thing, I was like, my only superpower I can bring here besides my youth is like, my, my, my detail, my, my attention to detail is only the details of structure. And the cool thing about Asia's structure as a writer is that like, the first act of her piece, she sort of like welcomes everyone into the world who do doesn't understand how like um, the work of sex work stripping works. So there's all these weird details where she's like, back page means this, this means that. And you're like, oh cool, that's interesting. And then the second act, she's just like, okay, now we're on a ride. You don't need these inf any more information. I'm just gonna give you like the facts of it. And then the third act, she moves into some fabulation. You know, she was like, what does the audience need from this? And I think that when Janix and I were talking about what our third act would be, we were like, how can we, um, 
recognize the, the fact of her fabulations in the third act, and also recognize that there's gonna be an audience of people who all come with their own relationship to this narrative, because everyone who has read her Twitter has like their own idea of the movie in their head, so we wanted to like meet that, subvert that, and then in a moment like the Stephanie thing, answer the people who like maybe had never read the Twitter before at all, and like, well, what's going on with that young white lady? Why aren't we in her world? Why don't we know what she's going through? And it became really exciting to meet that audience as well and say, like, this is what she's going through. And it moves like Reddit, which is kind of awkward and ugly, you know? I don't know what he was watching, because I don't know him. But, uh, I, you know, it takes place in 2015, and it felt like it was a time capsule. And I wanted to, as much as possible within the rules that we had set up, be true to that year and earlier. Zola is a period piece. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> 2015. Uh, so that's why fine. Fine. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. My first question. Um, Appreciate it. So for one, Jeremy and Janixa, like a lot of this character was on the page already. Um, the words she was using, the way she was speaking, like the character was kind of on the page. And then the next Step was kind of just talking to Janixa about exactly what she wanted from this character. Obviously, appropriation was part of that conversation. Um, and I, I mean, I, I feel like you can speak to this, but I, she, we, she seemed to want to take it there. I, I wanted that. I, I wanted it to feel stressful the way those kinds of people feel stressful to me. And, um, <laughs> she's in blackface the whole movie. Yeah, she's in, she's in blackface. Uh, and I, I think, again, to go back to that thing of validity, you know, it, it's a black, it's a black woman, it's a white woman, it's a black woman's story about her relationship to this white woman. Uh, I remember when the Twitter had come out, there was this idea of like the stories come from the ghetto, and Asia was like, actually, I'm from the suburbs, and and so and and if you heard her talk and Taylor talk and I talk and our, our you know our like. Cadence is sort of similar and tiny. And I just wanted to make sure that, I think there is a version of this movie directed by someone else where Taylor and Riley are swapped. And it was very important to me in my body to make sure that Taylor was what I needed her to be, which was some version of myself, and that Riley was a version of a nightmare. <laughs> um, and then like, just on the specifics, we worked together on the way I was talking. I would kind of send her voice notes and like, <laughs> yes or no or whatever. More, I worked more stressful. A, more stressful. <laughs> um, I worked with a woman named Eris Mendoza on that. And um, yeah, I just really did what Janixa asked me to do. <laughs> hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.